Sutra. Moreover, Ananda, as you are right now once again, does the wonderful pure thing essence unite with light? Does it unite with darkness? Does it unite with emptiness? Or does it unite with solid objects? Commentary. Uniting is different from mixing. Mixing is when two kinds of things are blended together. Uniting is like when a lid is placed on a round pot. They unite and become one. So he says, moreover, I will explain yet another doctrine for you. Ananda, as you are right now, once again, does the wonderful pure thing essence unite with light? The substance of your thing essence is subtle, wonderful, clear, and pure. Does it unite with light? Does it unite with darkness? Does it unite with emptiness? Or does it unite with solid objects? Sutra, if it unites with light, then when darkness comes, the characteristic of light is extinguished. How will you be able to see darkness, since the thing does not unite with darkness? If you do see darkness, and yet at that time, there is no union with darkness, but rather a union with light, then you would not have seen light. Since you would not have seen light, why is it that when there is union with light, you are able to know clearly that it is light and not darkness? Commentary If it unites with light, if you say the thing and the characteristic of light are united, then when darkness comes, the characteristic of light is distinguished. How will you be able to see darkness, since the thing does not unite with darkness? When it gets dark, when the characteristic of light disappears, since the seeing is not united with darkness, why can you see darkness? If you do see darkness and yet at that time there is no union with darkness, if you say that when you see darkness, the thing does not unite with darkness, although it does see darkness, it is not united with it, but rather a union with light, then you would not have seen light. If you say the thing is united with light, then it should not see light. That is, it, you say it can see what it is not united with, in this case darkness, then it should not see what it is united with, that is light. Since you would not have seen light, why is it that when there is union with light, you are able to know clearly that it is light or not darkness? You can see light and understand perfectly well that it is not darkness. According to your argument, then you should not see light. But that is actually not the case, since you are able to distinguish the difference between brightness and darkness. In the last analysis, then would you say that the thing is united with light or united with darkness? Sutra, the same is true of its union with darkness, with emptiness or with solid objects. Commentary, the very same principle applies to the possibility of the thing uniting with the darkness, with emptiness, or with solid objects. You cannot say that the thing unites with any characteristic at all, but you also cannot say that it does not unite with any characteristic. The fact is that light and darkness are subject to production and extinction, while the thing essence is neither produced nor destroyed. What is neither produced nor destroyed cannot be united with what is produced and destroyed. Ananda didn't understand this doctrine, so the third common is the greatly compassionate expedient device of speaking all kinds of examples to instruct him. Sutra, Ananda said to the Buddha, Won't honored one, as I consider it, the source of this wonderful enlightenment does not mix or unite with any conditioned mundane object or with the miser speculation. Is that the case? Commentary Having heard the Buddha's explanation, Ananda had another doubt. He once again thought about it and considered it. Ananda said to the Buddha, Won't honored one as I consider it, the source of this wonderful enlightenment. This refers to the same nature, does not mix or unite with any conditioned mundane object. It does not unite with the wearisome dust which is based on causes and conditions, or with the mind's speculation. Is that the case? He asks, are all these various things in fact not united? His asking shows that he is not speaking decidedly, 
before this, what he said was very decisive. He said that the thing is spontaneity and that it is causes and conditions, and he mentioned various other doctrines. He spoke with absolute confidence then, but his theories did not stand up. All of his ideas was mastered by Shakyamuni Buddha, so now he's learned how to be slippery. When he says things, he doesn't speak with any finality. Is it that you do not, they do not mix and unite? He takes a questioning tone. I think the doctrine was this way, but maybe it's not this way. Sutra, the Buddha said, Now you say further that the enlightened nature is neither mixed nor united. So now I ask you further, as to this wonderful thing as sense neither mixing nor uniting, does it not mix with light? Does it not mix with darkness? Does it not mix with emptiness? Does it not mix with solid objects? Commentary, the thing nature is neither produced nor extinguished. Ananda is trying to compare what is neither produced nor extinguished with what is produced and extinguished. He wants to compare it to light and darkness, to emptiness and solid objects, to the causal mundane conditions, and to the mind's thoughts. He keeps trying to combine it with them. Now he's thought some more and he says, Is it the case that he does not mix and unite? In reply, the Buddha said, Now you say further that the enlightened nature is neither mixed or un not united. You said before that the enlightened thing is mixed and united. So now you, I ask you further, I ask you something else now. As to this wonderful thing and sense neither mixing nor uniting, you say that the subtle wonderful thing and sense which is not produced and not extinguished neither mixes nor unites. But does it not mix with light? Does it not mix with darkness? Does it not mix with emptiness? Does it not mix with solid objects? Speak up. Sutra, if it does not mix with light, then between seeing and light there must be a boundary. Commentary, if you want to say that it does not mix with light, then your seeing essence and the characteristic of light must certainly have boundaries. What is the boundary of your seeing? What is the boundary of the characteristic of light? If you say it does not mix with light, then find the boundary between them. What indication is there of a division between them? Sutra, is a mind it further what place is light? What place is seeing? Where are the boundaries of the thing and the light? Commentary is a mind it further look into it. What place is light? Where does the light end? What place is seeing? Where does the seeing end? Where are the boundaries of the thing and the light? Tell me, where is the boundary line which divides them? Sutra Ananda, if there is no seeing within the boundaries of light, There is no contact between them, and clearly one would not know where the characteristic of light is. Then how could its boundaries be realized? Commentary, Ananda, if there is no seeing within the boundaries of light, if within the characteristic of light, there is indeed no seeing essence. Then there is no contact between them. Light and seeing could not bump into one another. The two would never meet. And clearly one would not know where the characteristic of light is. Since the two cannot come in contact, it is quite evident that one could not know where the characteristic of light is. How could its boundaries be realized? If you don't even know where its characteristic is, how can any boundary be drawn? Sutra, as to its not mixing with the darkness, with emptiness, or with solid objects, The principle is the same. Commentary. The doctrine is the same for darkness, for emptiness, and for solid objects. Now you divide them for me. You say they do not mix. Where is the boundary of their not mixing? Speak up. Sutra. Moreover, as to the wonderful thing essence neither mixing nor uniting. Does it not unite with light? Does it not unite with darkness? Does it not unite with emptiness? Does it not unite with solid objects? Commentary. Above, mixing was discussed. Now, uniting will be discussed. 
Moreover, as to the wonderful thing as sense neither mixing nor uniting, you say that the subtle wonderful thing as sense does not mix with or unite. But does it not unite with light? Does it not unite with darkness? Does it not unite with emptiness? Does it not unite with solid objects? Sutra, if it does not unite with light, then the thing and the light are at odds with each other by nature. As the other ear and the light, which do not come in contact. Commentary, if it does not unite with light, then the thing and the light are at odds with each other by nature. If the thing is not united with the characteristic of light, then they are opposed to one another. Since they do not unite, they go so far as to be in discord and mutual opposition, as are the ear and the light which do not come in contact. It would be like the ear. If you look, you can see light, but if you cover your eyes, your ears don't know if it is light or dark. The ear does not distinguish brightness and darkness. Light and the hearing nature of the ear do not come in contact. Sutra, since the thing does not know where the characteristic of light is, how can it determine clearly whether there is union? Commentary, it can't see the characteristic of light because it can't unite with it. So how can it distinguish, how can it discern the presence or absence of light? Sutra, as it is not uniting with darkness, with emptiness, or with solid objects, The principle is the same. Commentary, the doctrine of whether the thing unites with darkness, with emptiness, or with solid objects, is the same.